Hi everyone and welcome to the Bold Hairspring, my name is Ivan and in today's video I'll be reviewing my first Swiss entry-level luxury watch, which is the Oris Aquis. Oris is a well-known brand among watch enthusiasts, but it's not so popular among the general public. For that reason, I would also mention a few things about its heritage and where it stands on the market as a brand today. I bought this Aquis about 3 years ago, I have worn it quite a lot, which I know is difficult to believe, as the watch looks literally brand new, but trust me, it's been on my wrist many many times, I just take very good care of my watches. So what really attracted me to this Aquis was the overall chunky design, and also the bracelet. I know it's an integrated bracelet that you can't easily replace, third party straps are also difficult to come by, and usually very expensive. For some people that is a huge deal breaker, but in reality the bracelet is so well built guys and so comfortable that they never get bored of it. It's also very solid and very well machined, it tapers nicely and the milled out clasp is also decent. There is a proper milled diver's extension. In my opinion the bracelet looks awesome, tough and aggressive, but also somehow elegant due to the polished outer links. I do have one complaint though, the screws. They are so tiny and so difficult to manipulate that I really suggest you take the watch to your local AD or watchmaker to size the bracelet for you. Seriously guys, I messed up one of the screws on mine. I've never had a watch with such a difficult to size bracelet and uh, if you have this watch and you didn't find it difficult to size, please let me know how you did it and what screwdriver you used, I'll really appreciate it. Anyway, other than that it's a very high quality bracelet and if Oris adds a micro adjustment on the go system, it will become perfect. Ok, now let's have a closer look at the case, the width is 43.5mm, the lug distance is 50mm, while the case thickness is just 12.5mm. It's also a little bit heavy, sized for my wrist, it weighs 164 grams. However the dimensions don't tell the whole story here, as the watch wears much smaller. On my 17cm or 6.7 inch wrist, the Aquis sits well proportioned, very comfortable due to the curved lugs and excellent bracelet, while having a very respectable wrist presence. The design is also quite unique, the case has that distinctive outward sloping kettle sort of shape, and the crown guards are literally screwed to the case, so I really think the design is awesome, and of course since it's a dive watch, it is 200 meters water resistant. Then the finishing of both the case and the bracelet is brilliant. It's on about the same level as Tudor and Omega. And if there are any differences quality wise, then they are not visible to the naked eye. So let's have a quick comparison. Here is my Tudor Black Bay. And here is my Omega Aqua Terra. As you can see the Aquis looks very nice next to Tudor and Omega, even though it's 2 to 3 times cheaper. It has an MSRP of 1950 euro in Spain, but I got mine for just 1300 from Chrono24, which is honestly a very good deal. And then just look at the dial. It's clean, symmetrical, legible and also beautiful thanks to the blue sunburst. The hour markers are applied and just like the hands they are all high polished, so you do get some nice reflections depending on how light hits them. The crystal is sapphire, it's domed and it has anti-reflective coating on the inside. Oris has really done a fantastic job with the Aquis, as all aspects of the dial and well of the whole watch in general go together very nicely. Nothing feels out of place. The 120 click bezel is also great, it has a high quality bezel insert and the action is very crisp, with no noticeable back play. And then there is the loom, Oris has used Superluminova BGW9 which glows blue, it seems to be generously applied and it just lasts. If you have any other watch with BGW9 then you know what to expect. When it comes to loom though, I have to tell you guys, I've been spoiled by my recently acquired Ocean X, which uses a combination of C3 and BGW9 and it also has a fully loomed bezel insert. So that being said, I would love to see Oris giving us a loomed insert in the future too. Moving on, let's talk about the movement, which you can actually see through the mineral crystal exhibition screw down case back. And yes, it's a 26 joules 4 Hz Celita SW200, with a very modest power reserve of 38 hours. It's not chronometer grade, in fact, it's just a base grade Celita. Nevertheless, it's quite accurate. Mine's been running at about plus 6 7 seconds per day, and this is something I'm happy with. And you can also see the Oris registered trademark red rotor, which was used for the first time in 2002. 
So am I happy that Oris uses base grade Celita movements in most of their watches? Well, not really, but I'm not exactly disappointed either, as this is a reliable, easy and cheap to service movement. But I will also say that if Oris puts a chronometer grade Celitas or one of their new in-house calibers in it, the Aquis will double in price, if not more. So guys, the Oris Aquis is one of the best, if not the best watch under 2000 euro. And at the beginning of this video I referred to it as an entry level luxury watch, because I think it is. Some people call Oris a mid tier watch brand, but I strongly disagree, and my argument is very simple. Oris has the heritage, it produces high quality pieces, it's growing in terms of popularity, plus it's not cheap either. These are pretty much all the ingredients that you can find in a luxury watch brand, right? And its heritage or history, it's actually very interesting, and I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out. So Oris was founded in 1904, which is one year before Rolex, and it's also more Swiss than Rolex, as it was founded in Switzerland, unlike Rolex which was founded in England. And let me tell you a little bit more, Oris was continuously and very successfully expanding until the 1940s, but then the Second World War had a huge impact on their international distribution network. So in order to survive, they started manufacturing and selling alarm clocks, which blew everybody's mind in 1949, when Oris launched their 8-day power reserve models. Three years later, Oris came up with its first automatic in-house movement, and in the 60s, Oris was in the top 10 largest watchmakers in the world, producing 1.2 million watches and clocks a year. But then the quartz crisis happened, and at the same time Oris became part of the ASUAG group, which later on became the Swatch group. Fortunately, in 1982, Oris managed a buyout, and it has remained independent ever since. Fast forward to 2020, and Oris is doing better than ever with its Aquis, the Diver 65, the Big Crown, and the Artelier lineups. Something super exciting is that Oris is back to manufacturing in-house calibers. In 2014, they announced their 10-day power reserve manual wine caliber 110. And now, in 2020, they've announced the caliber 400 which looks really promising. It's automatic and it has a whooping power reserve of 5 days. So I'm really looking forward to seeing which is going to be the first watch to get it. So guys, definitely check Oris history because it will definitely change the way you look at them as a watch brand. As of where Oris stands on the market right now, my personal opinion is that it stands on its own. I mean, it doesn't seem like Oris is trying to compete directly with anyone. They're playing their own game without really caring much about anyone else but they're definitely trying to establish themselves in the 2k, 5k price range. At least that's the perception I'm getting. And if we talk about the Aquis in particular, there is the Longines Hydro Conquest and also the Takoya Aqua Racer, two great watches in their own rights and I would love to add them both to the collection, but honestly, the Aquis has the edge in terms of the overall finishing and the bracelet's build quality. So here is a question for you guys. If you had to pick one out of the three, which one would it be? The Aquis? the Aqua Racer or the Hydro Conquest? Let me know in the comments below. In conclusion guys, the Oris Aquis is a killer watch. I find it very versatile, very unique in terms of design and overall it's a very solid choice for the money. You can put it next to a watch that is 5 times more expensive and it will still look good. So thank you very much for watching another of my videos. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.